Whether you're a suburban athlete or an Olympic champion, you've got to work hard to get results. We've put over 15 years' experience into developing Active Man, combining vitamins, minerals, and proteins. Active Man helps provide you with the nutrients you need to optimize performance and assist recovery. Discover the Active Man range now available. Active Man, power up. Welcome to this week's Power Progress podcast, Series 3. And we've got another amazing guest speaker on who was on Series 2, and that is Lincoln. Bryden, how you doing, mate? I had to make sure I pronounced that right. <laughs> I'm doing very well. I'm doing a lot better now that you pronounced me Nate, my name right. So um, thanks for the invite. I'm really glad to be here. Yeah, brilliant stuff. Obviously, we've done an intro in the last one, but you were a professional critter, you're a cricketer and also you an international presenter, which is one of the times I saw you, as well as doing a course on metabolic effect. Mm -hmm. so a huge amount of experience in the fitness industry. Yeah. We thought we would talk about how things have changed before COVID, mm -hmm. during, and how it is now. And I think that's quite a huge conversation to have, isn't it, at the moment with the fitness industry? Yeah, very much so. I think that COVID actually presented for many fit pros an opportunity to move to an online portion of their business. Um, it presented a threat to many other fit pros that um, solely relied on face-to-face -face teaching. And then you've got the the instructors that kind of uh, sort of fell in between, you know, that felt that they needed to still offer a service. So they went online, um, but they sort of gave sort of free sessions on Facebook um, and on, on Zoom, which was well received probably from the participants point of view but maybe affected other fit pros that were still trying to earn a living um and by transitioning online so it definitely presented opportunities for people that had that mindset to adopt to that opportunity yeah, yeah. um but i still think some people still sort of struggled with that transition definitely certainly if someone wasn't used to being say on camera and they're mm. used to doing something like that. I mean, for me, I was already doing things like that, being I was already doing presenting. Yeah. Um, so for me, when the when it originally happened, it was like, okay, how can I serve? That's the first thing I thought of. Mm -hmm. Right, what I first did is I just literally went, I'm going to do it for free. And I don't, I don't, I don't know whether that was a mistake or not. Mm. Obviously, I went straight on to not Facebook. Actually, I, I may have done it once, but I went straight on to the platform what we're using now. Yeah, everyone straight on to more of a, an established platform for something like that. Mm -hmm. And I was doing it for free at the beginning. And I was doing it every day, and it kind of gave me a bit of insanity, I suppose, for me, because yeah. well, I was having a workout with them. And mm -hmm. what's interesting is before that, I was doing the boot camps where it didn't necessarily need me to do it with them. So when I first started doing the hit classes, I was absolutely pagged, and I, yeah. remember I thought this is embarrassing because there's there's my clients here who's been mm. in camps, which I'd hate to say it to them at the time, but some of them were fitter than me, you know. Yeah. Like, like next one's burpees, you know, <laughs> it's like that. But I lost a lot of revenue straight away. But I was all about just trying to serve, and long as I had, I worked out the logistics on the financial point of view that I could get through. So that I was happy with that, at least doing that. And then I slowly got one third of my one to one business back, which we did on on the on the video as well, which there's pros and cons to that. You know, is there's a lot of drawbacks with it that you can't give them the attention to detail what they need to correct them. But at least it gave me some form of human contact. Mm. That was the good thing about that. But, you know, for me, financially, it really did hit me quite a lot at that beginning stage. Yeah, and they will do. And I think another aspect of that is that I found, especially with the people that I worked with, the ones that were able to transition online that hadn't um, transitioned previously were the ones that had built up a big community or big following from their face-to-face -face teaching. Yeah. And had built up that kind of brand loyalty um and so people wanted to continue to a support them but be be part of their their industry i think the ones that struggled were the ones that thought right that's it i'm going to be an online instructor and i'm going to be an online trainer without building up any kind of 
community or customer base prior. So I think that was an important point. And if anything, that highlighted the importance for instructors to really build that community of people that know, like, and trust you, whether that's face-to-face, -face, ideally face-to-face, -face, but if not online. So it's not just about um, posting workouts of how great you are and how many pistol squats you can do or whatever it's about how you can show that you can help people achieve the results that they want to achieve yeah that, that actually I did find that was quite enlightening for me that there was a lot of people willing to just help me and in fact even when I said look I don't want anything because everyone's in the same position um, a lot of the clients actually just went I'm paying you anyway mm -hmm. so that, that was lovely to get that side of it the hard bit for me was the bit where I went, because I remember at the time, um, Sarah was saying to me, come on, you get, you, you are going to have to start charging because you, you're going to have to, you know, it's a business sort of thing. Mm. And um, what I've done is I'll put a donation bit in. And it was amazing to see how many people come forward and just didn't even hesitate. They donated. And eventually I transitioned into making it uh, a, a subscription again. Yep. That was, that was scary for me to then to get them to – Get him to pay if that makes sense because I was just purely honestly from the bottom of my heart, it's purely that I just wanted to serve. But that point of thinking, okay, I do need to survive here, mm. that was a hard transition. I'm sure a lot of people, not in just our industry, but other industries, had the same problems as well with that. Yeah, and I think you know, there's an interesting point in that, as you say, you came from a position of wanting to serve, i.e., to serve, solve a problem. And because that was very genuine and authentic, people could see that they bought into that and then they took part in that. I think, especially in the fitness industry, sometimes it can be seen that instructors are not knowing why they're doing what they're doing. They're yeah. maybe just teaching a class or teaching a routine. And I think those instructors have found, they initially found it difficult to transition online. Yeah. And also to get full sessions because they're they're just seen as another hit instructor, another yoga instructor, another Pilates instructor, rather than a fitness professional that actually solves a specific problem for the people that take part in their sessions. And I think if you can make that distinction, then it makes your business and your brand a lot stronger so that if something like the pandemic hits and you have to pivot you're able to do so because you've got something to pivot that's unique to yourself that you're not competing with someone else. Yeah, yeah. I mean, my point of view, I was obviously completely self-employed, but you was in a position where you're self-employed and employed. Is that correct? So you're yeah, yeah, yeah. slightly different in that account, wasn't it? Yeah. So, I, I mean, I was very lucky. You know, I was able to work from home um, and I had that income coming in, but I still recognise that there was a need to help instructors that many of them felt very lost yeah. in terms of what to do from a te technology point of view some of them have never used zoom before some of them have never even considered having that hybrid offering of teaching online yeah. as well as face to face there was a lot of instructors that felt that their business literally was rocking up at their local leisure center or health club teaching 10 15 classes a week and then enjoying their sort of free time and then all of a sudden that staple routine was taken away literally in the space of a day um and that led to a lot of people feeling lost confused etc so my business as it were that took a very swift pivot to helping instructors from a coaching point of view and you know there's been loads of success stories of instructors that kind of regathered their thoughts provided a service like yourself or actually went on and developed their own program their own course that they were able to deliver online and there's some now that have transitioned completely online um, but some that have now post covid have got a successful face-to-face -face business, but then they've also got an online offering yeah. to serve more people. Yeah. And I, that's what I was talking to you about just before we went on was the fact that at one point during the lockdown, I was thinking, actually, I could go completely online here. And mm. I've got this online platform and app where I coach people and I've got my hit classes and my Pilates. And I was purely going to go completely down that route. 
And then as I went along, I was like, I, I felt like I was missing something mm. because I wasn't getting the one thing what I enjoy doing. And that is seeing people talking to them, seeing their journey a bit more in person. Mm. So as soon as we were, we were able to go back to say normal, I couldn't wait to go back into person. But mm -hmm. provide, like you just said, I've got the hybrid of the two. It shifted more towards the in person, but that's down to because I generally enjoy that more. If you know what I mean, not that yeah. these don't offer good quality. It's just as an instructor, there's only one of you unless you get a team. Mm. So I feel like you naturally go towards what you feel you're going to like more and you're going to enjoy more. So and that's yeah. the solution. And it, you know, it boils down to personality types. I know there were some instructors that actually re decided. I actually, I quite like online. This yeah. is quite nice. I can I can do my stuff um, without having to hire a hall, without having traveling expenses. But more importantly, the clients and customers, there is a lot of clients and customers that found out I quite like exercising in my own home. Yeah. I don't, it sounds horrible. I don't like, I don't want to do the small talk, talking at a class. You know, I just want to go in do my session and carry on with my business. And I think that now that the consumer, yeah, their eyes have been open to the fact that this is possible rather than the traditional idea that you have to go somewhere to do your exercise, which when you, when you actually break it down is pretty crazy that yeah. there is a thought process that you've actually got to go to a facility to exercise. So that kind of has been, that barrier has been broken to a certain extent. Yeah, so I don't know how much it would have done if it wasn't for what happened because a lot of people had a bit of a had a stigma, didn't they, about oh well, I can't do it online, I have to be mm. in person. But this kind of forced them to at least try it, and in fact, yep. got a lot more out of it than what they thought, didn't they? Yeah, very much so. And I think that that's that's been a, a positive, if there's one positive if from it. But you know, you do raise a good point in that there, you know, you cannot understate the value of community of human connection. And the human connection that you do get from a face-to-face -face offering that you may not get online, you know, and yeah, you can try and do Zoom parties and, you know, yeah. what, you know, what not, you know, quiz nights online, but it's still not the same as that kind of face-to-face -face offering. I think the, but the danger with that is that I think there are a lot of instructors when the sort of restrictions eased, they almost forgot about everything that they were faced with. Yeah during the pandemic and thought okay you know what let's just that's never going to happen again let's just go back to what we did before yeah. and i think that's that's the shame for those that for these people that have done that i think that's the shame rather than seeing the pandemic as an opportunity where for an extended period of time we were forced to sit reflect on what we were doing before yeah was that working was that serving us is that where we want to be? Yeah. And then we had time to actually investigate and think about strategies to change that. And I think that to actually just go back to how things were um, pre pandemic uh, for some is definitely an opportunity that was wasted. Yeah. Well, for me, uh, like I said, going back to that, I used to do the boot camps. So I've actually started doing a few more of them, mm -hmm. but do my hit, which I do in person. And also stream online, so people yeah. now locally have got the option come and per come to the class in person. But they don't quite have time; they do it online. If it's obviously international or somewhere else down the country, they do just do it online. So that's yeah. where it's enhanced the business in that sense. That has given people more opportunity to still do the same thing, whether they choose to do it from home or in person. So that's certainly something which is a shame, like you said if other people just literally went back to what they're comfortable with, not necessarily mm. what may be better doing the other solutions, you know? Yeah. And I mean, there's also the recognition that th there is a very genuine, um, realistic kind of um, apprehension for yeah. a, a number of fit pros to go online. So I do get that. Um, there is a bit of a learning curve as well that uh, is required you know, with the technology, et cetera, and to make it happen. And, and some instructors may be willing to go through that learning curve um, or so there, you know, there's the, the path of least resistance is to go to a facility, 
that does all your marketing that gets all your clients and class members in and deliver your session so i suppose it depends on how you want to structure your 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 business and how you want it to work for you moving forwards yeah your coaching business before the pandemic was mm-hmm. was you already doing it via online or did you do a lot more yeah. custom based yeah no it was it was online so um as i say from that point of view the transition wasn't that big um what it did do i suppose because there was more of a need i was able to get more instructors to investigate that possibility that that might be helpful for them um and and that's that's been a, a huge positive you know and and i was able to have more group coaching sessions because people had the time um I found the accountability was probably a little bit better because again, people were really acting on the tasks because they had the time. We Whereas by the everyday tasks, weren't they in a way? Yeah, hundred percent. So um the actual progress that instructors were making was phenomenal because yeah. you know, and because you know, they would do the tasks they would reflect the, on the task, set themselves action t- action points, and then then sort of move forward on along that path um and that's that, don't get me wrong that's still happening post pandemic but obviously you know i mean we've only got to look at um the app clubhouse you yeah. know you know clubhouse during the pandemic was like the, they were saying it was going to be the next big thing the next instagram twitter blah 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 but now because people are out in face to face you know the the actual users the amount of people that use it the amount of people that still got it on their phones has probably um decreased dramatically mm-hmm. so it's it's just been a bit flexible with with people's requirements their and their um lifestyle and also their distractions i was just about to say that so now we're going towards after it which was organically went towards so in terms of you coaching online as, do you find you need to give people a little bit more of a nudge to do bits or have you got a different system to get them to do the next I, task? Yeah, I think that, you know, the program, you know, my my sort of second book that I wrote was about creating your own program and course, creating your own framework. And so the framework is still the same. However, the the, the method and the mode for creating it or achieving it is slightly different. Yeah. So I give more... Um, freedom breaks so i'll set a task and then whereas maybe a week after we'll have a group coaching session to reflect on that task i might put in an implementation week so that implementation week isn't where we get together it's basically giving people the space and the time to actually act on the previous week's actions because with any coaching i'm sure you'd agree whether it's fitness whether it's lifestyle whether it's business you have to implement the points that have been given to you so people say knowledge is power but for me i'm like no it's the implementation of that knowledge that's that's the thing that gives you the power so you have to it's all very well taking loads and loads and loads of notes on oh that's a really good point but yeah. you've you've got to actually act on those points to to move forward, um, and that's what I try to give people the opportunity to do. So I've actually dumbed down on the amount of stuff because again we we kind of get trapped into the whole more is better. Mm-hmm. I'm going to give you I'm going to give you this and I'm going to give you this and I'm going to give you this and I'm going to give you this to try to showcase our value. You yeah. know, it's this amount of money because I'm giving you five thousand eight hundred eighty six things, mm-hmm. whereas sometimes if you strip all of that back and actually give people the space to act on the the few key points that are going to make a difference, that's the thing that actually offers um, true value. Yeah, definitely. I like that with the implementation because I've done courses in the past and it almost could be exactly the same thing I want to learn. And one I didn't like the look of and the other one I went for. And the main thing was because the language they used yep. and the implementation strategies and the systems, which mm. made- really buy into it yep. not necessarily all the information and what i was going to get from it it was the outcome from that if you know yep. definitely so you explain that really well which again as a teacher that's that's our jobs isn't it is to make yep. it as simple as possible yeah definitely like simple not easy okay. yeah definitely i love that one yeah is there anything more you want to add today in terms of um obviously your, your services you provide or your, your book what you have out there right now 
Um, I think the only the only things I'd like to add, I think the pandemic period has shown that the the you know blink of an eye, circumstances can change. You know, and I think it's very um, I suppose dangerous to just assume that where we are at now this is basically going to be it and it's going to, you know, and, and life's going to move on and in, in this realm. And I think it, it's, it's to try to make ourselves, and this is sort of a daily practice that I'm adopting as well, to try to make ourselves as adaptable yes. and coachable as possible. Yeah. Um, I, th I think that that's the key. And that's what I'm passionate about in, you know, the coaching, my prime lab coaching group that I, that I offer. Uh, and that's the, the, the basis of the, the book that I wrote, which is prime, which you can get on Amazon. Um, but if anyone's interested, um, they just need to message me on, on the various socials under Lincoln Bryden and I'll um, gladly answer. Yes, that, that's brilliant, mate. And one of the things what really hit home is a little quote what I've got, which um, always makes me think on reflection of my actions is to become comfortable at being uncomfortable. Mm. That one little quote for me makes me go, have I got too comfortable? Am I evolving? And it just makes me keep going, where can I go to be uncomfortable to make it comfortable, to make me learn something new. And I think that's super important. So, yep. yeah, always great to have you, mate. No worries. Absolute yeah. pleasure. Yeah. And uh, hopefully we get to meet in person one day again. Yeah. Fingers crossed. I'm sure it will happen. It will happen. I'm sure it will. Good stuff, mate. Well, great to speak to you, mate. And I'll chat with you soon. All right. Take care. Take care, Nathan. Bye-bye.